Right now, I want the questions related to the talk, which is the interesting trends in computer uh, computer uh, uh, networks, and talk specific to this takeaways and post workshop homework, post workshop assignments. This is the only thing I want to hear about. Anything else? Please bring it up after the tea break. Uh, there is a question regarding this uh, MPLS tagging, madam. Hmm. Uh, whenever there is a traffic engaging provided by the uh, MPLS tagging, uh, there is any another possibility for uh, traffic marking and as well as conjunction control. Because whenever the over traffic, we need to monitor the traffic also. Yes. But uh, this MPLS tagging is provided for only engaging the traffic. This is the question related to MPLS tagging. See, traffic engineering is not just, traffic engineering is lot more. Traffic engineering does take into account the congestion and everything. So, if you have two paths, it's not just load balancing. You have to determine which path is congested. So, if you have two paths, one is uh, giving you 10 Mbps, another is giving you only 1 Mbps. So, when you are uh, loading the paths, you will send, uh, let's say, 90 percent of the traffic on the 10 Mbps and only 10 percent of the traffic on 1 Mbps. So, you do take into account the congestion levels everything else as part of traffic engineering. So, how it is done within MPLS as I said it is a very complicated uh, topic. There are books, entire books written on them. Uh, so, I mean there is not enough time uh, as I could do an entire course based on that. So, I cannot get into the details at this stage. Madam, my question regarding to the potential activities. Yes. Is you give five options regarding to the create TPS, create peer instructions like that. Yes. Can you send uh, one of the example regarding these things so that we can uh, uh, refer uh, for the further instructions? It is nothing oh. but we will take one example among these so and we can example, proceed for our, uh, our real time. Okay, let me give an example for each so that you are aware of what I am talking about. For example, if you choose the task of think pair share. Sridhar has provided some examples as part of his slides, uh, which I'm sh I have already shared with you. So, what you need to do if you are using think pair share is there is the last slide that specifies how to the interconnection, what should be there as part of think, what should be there as part of share, what should be there as part of uh, uh, sorry pair. Uh, some details are given, last slide of Sridhar's talk is very useful and he has also given examples of uh, a particular concept of where he has used that constructor and specified clearly what uh, what would be asked in the thing share, what would be asked in the pair share and what would be done during the share uh, pair, share phase. So, what you need to do if you are picking this up is go through three the slides carefully once more, pay particular attention to the last slide, look at a bunch of examples that are there as part of the slides relate the theory to those examples and then you pick up four different concepts and write the resources based on the constructor. In other words, the constructor will have those three fill in the blanks, which is the think fill in the blank, pair fill in the blank, share fill in the blank. You, there are paragraphs in fact, not uh, fill in the paragraphs. So, you fill in those paragraphs and then you create four such things in a document and submit the document to your uh, uh, workshop coordinator. So, that is with respect to think pair share. Similarly, if you are trying to do something with peer instruction, again first thing you should do is watch the video. There are slides associated with it, go through the slides. There is a constructor associated with it just like think pair share, you have to go through the constructor. And then there are also examples given as part of the slides. What you need to do is again fill in the paragraphs in the constructor, four such paragraphs, I mean four such concepts. Each concept has uh, uh, some paragraphs you need to fill and submit this again to your workshop coordinator. Now, if it is a question bank that you are trying to do, your reference will be the Bodhi tree platform where you saw a lot of this practice quizzes. 
uh, go through those quizzes you know the kind of questions that were uh, asked. So come up with similar questions. I would not say exact I mean naturally if you come up with an exact question there is no value addition because they are already there. You should add on to that particular uh, question bank whereby others can use these questions in using as part of mid sense finals and so on and so forth. So you are adding to the question bank the reference there for you is the Bodhi tree platform the kind of questions that were asked as part of Bodhi tree. You could also uh, google uh, for uh, uh, the, the textbooks also I do not mean google the textbooks also back of it there are some questions. So you just look through some questions and try to come up with your own questions please do not uh, cut paste plagiarize and so on because it is not going to help because the content is already there you are not doing any value addition there. Then the question is for example uh, animation so for example or uh, some demonstration of some concept. So you could show some sliding window protocols or you could show the THCP condition control or you could show some routing all these can be animated again the reference for this there is not I mean some of these uh, textbooks like I have listed as part of uh, the Bodhi tree they come with a companion website where they do have some of these animations. I will try to put together some such resources and share it with you right now off hand I do not have a reference for you but I will put together some references for you for animation as well and I will share it with you through email. So you look at those references you understand what is it that they are trying to do and do something similar for some other concept. So these are the uh, and of course the lab exercises and project descriptions. So the references for you there are the lab exercise sheets I have shared with you socket programming uh, assignment or NS2 assignment or TCP dump based assignment or whatever it is. So you use those as a reference and then come up with something. So if you are submitting a lab assignment description uh, and if it is a project description I would like to see a description like the description I have shared with you as part of socket programming exercise or if it is an NS2 I would like to see a write up like the kind I have shared with you as part of NS2 exercise. So that is what I am expecting. Uh, be before question I really thankful to you madam for providing such an excellent material okay. through your videos as well as all the lab sessions. Okay, thank you. My question is uh, is there any research going on related to the session layer functionalities maybe related to the session layer function. See the session layer more or less uh, some of these uh, RTP kind of stuff that I was talking about they are kind of managing the audio streams and uh, video streams and so on. So there is definitely um, some research uh, again if you are trying to do there is nothing majorly novel in that space it is more or less uh, uh, it is an incremental it what we would call as an incremental addition it is not something uh, that is shifting the paradigm or so working in that space you can only make an incremental contribution but there is there is always something or the other uh, happening in that space. So you could come up with a better way of adapting to the user bandwidth changing the video supporting better videos how do you do it uh, using some of these uh, sessions session layer kind of a thing. So there is some work that happens but as I said it is a beaten to death kind of a topic so it is difficult to do value addition there. Madam I am having little bit doubt related to the, the concepts you have explained in your videos related to the Hamming mode. When error rate is high you prefer to use the Hamming code but I am when in, the, in a single packet more number of bits are in error then whether to prefer CRC or Hamming code in a single bit more number of bits are in error and one more thing I have, we have learned through so many reference textbooks is it is always preferred to go for detection followed by the retransmission instead of correction. So regarding I mean I answered this question earlier also where you go for error detection followed by retransmission provided the error rates are small and also provided uh, the you can tolerate that. So you could go for error detection with retransmission if the error rates are small if your error rates are large it is better to go for error correction. So there is again as I said there is an example problem within the Bodhi tree 
that brings about the contrast between the two. Regarding your first question, I did not understand clearly you are talking about whether to use Hamming codes or? In a single packet, if more number of bits are in error, then whether Hamming code will handle it? So again, it depends upon your uh, uh, end goal. So if you want to correct the errors, there are plenty of error correction codes. Hamming codes are kind of uh, a bit of a layman code. There are a lot more more sophisticated codes that you can use to correct the errors. So yeah, you can. So you will always add more redundant information in a packet and send. So at the receiver, you could potentially correct based on some uh, error correction code. My question is uh, about sensor network, which is connected with software defined network. As you have just mentioned, uh, while doing the projects, student need interface with the different hardware and sensors. It is very difficult to build circuits for them. In such cases, can you suggest any ready-made kits or circuit that can help them to work on software and uh, please put some uh, light on sensor network and their new train. Thank you. Actually, I did not understand. Software defined networks is more in the context of wired networks. I did not understand your relation with sensor. Maybe you are confusing it with software defined radios. So there are two different terms. There is something called software defined networks and there is something called software defined radios. Both are very different. So what I was talking about in the talk is software defined networks that is more in the wired network space. It has well you could potentially do it in wireless also but right now the focus is on wired space. So I mean I do not uh, that given that I do not understand your question. Do you mean software defined radios? My question is about sensor network which can be handled by the software. So in that case some uh, small kits are needed to interface with the software. So that one has so got nothing to do with software defined radios or software defined networks. If you are just talking about sensor networks, there are a bunch of uh, uh, sensors. Uh, you could buy sensors. Uh, there used to be T-Mote. I do not know whether it is being sold anymore. Uh, there are a bunch of vendors that sell these uh, hardware. And there are a lot of software in the form of tiny OS, Kontiki, so on and so forth. All you need to do is get that software, install it and then you could use it to demonstrate many things like uh, routing protocols, MAC protocols, transport protocols, so on and so forth. So the references for this, I mean you just have to Google, I mean tiny OS and Kontiki are two popular operating systems for use on them. And uh, earlier, I do not know what has happened to the hardware, earlier T-Mode Sky was being sold, Crossbow was also selling some, but there are enough vendors out there, if you just Google you will find out there are enough vendors, you just need to buy the hardware, download this, these are both open source, download the software, install it and then you are ready to use sensor network. Well, my question is related to socket programming, if we execute send UTP dot C, so we are getting IP before package and UDP packet. So is there any way by which we can get TCP fragmentation? See, it does not matter that send UDP dot C was a simple uh, program that was written uh, for, uh, uh, for this particular task. That said, you could potentially uh, write some other socket programming uh, that will also do fragmentation. but. Typically TCP internally what it does is uh, it determines what the MTU size is and it will put only that that fits within the MTU size. In other words, if you were to open a TCP socket, it will not generate a 4000 byte packet on its own because it knows underlying MTU is only 1500, so it will only generate packet size under 1500. Uh, that is how TCP is internally uh, hardwired. Now it is possible through some hacking to change that aspect of TCP. Uh, it is also possible for you to write some uh, um, higher layer socket uh, programming using what are called raw sockets. I do not want to get into those details where you could potentially do many things. Uh, but as such if you are using a TCP thing it will not generate a 4000 4, byte packet because internally it knows what the MTU size is and it will not do it unless you hack it. Okay,
in uh, performing the or selecting the protocol in cloud computing and grid computing environment uh, we are always choosing uh, tcp protocol uh, but if we choose tcp protocol means uh, each and every time uh, that means each and every packet we need to send acknowledgement so it leads to the congestion uh, why we are selecting uh, uh, continuously tcp protocol in this scenario see tcp protocol as i said has evolved it's been uh, customized for various settings for example if you are using tcp for uh, some kind of grid computation kind of a thing where for example if you are using tcp to interconnect super computers for example you don't use the layman's version of tcp there is a separate uh, tcp variant for that which can um, make use of effective use of uh, the huge you don't want to deal with uh, let's say 1500 byte uh, packets or uh, events you are using extremely large packet sizes as part of tcp there are a lot of issues with tcp you can't use very big packets so tcp has been fine tuned for various environments so there's an active ongoing area of research to use tcp custom fit tcp for uh, various environments like grid or even within a data center network maybe you'll use some variant of tcp that is better suited for it uh, yeah so does that answer the question so it's not that there is whatever i covered as part of tcp i covered the concepts so these concepts are used and uh, modified to suit the particular environment in which you are using tcp for example there is some something separate for tcp over satellite networks there is some separate uh, tcp i wouldn't say separate tcp it's the same tcp but some configuration parameters are changed to fit the particular environment uh, so my query is in the current uh, trends of networking as we are using uh, uh, virtualization in broad so this virtualization is carried out uh, in what scale whether uh, it needs a software support or it needs some device support or it needs some sort of uh, any other uh, peripheral see virtual the idea is so again this is a very recent so for example if you are talking about software defined networks it's a very recent topic so there is not much clarity on how to go forward everyone is coming up with some ideas throwing them in the soup uh, people some are implementing some are checking the feasibility and so on so forth so going forward what does it mean there is not clarity at this stage because this is a very active very hot area of uh, research so but at the higher level the idea is you want to use the same hardware and use virtualization to convert the hardware into whatever function you want routing function switching function firewall function load balancing function whatever it is you want to use the same hardware and do it so that's the the high level picture what does it mean that level of detail as i said everyone has their own ideas there's a lot of active research happening so i cannot really there are very many approaches people are proposing whether that is each has its own drawbacks trade offs uh, that will all be evaluated over the next few years and finally some clarity will emerge or it may be the case that uh, nothing may come out also i mean it's it's good conceptually it is important also because many feel the need for something like that but then it may not take off also because for example many have felt the need for qos in the internet for a really long time but only now again it, we, we keep talking about qos 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 but internet really doesn't support qos so who knows what is going to happen okay ma'am one more simple question nowadays we are listening about uh, big data center network so as we are uh, focusing on data center networking what might be the possible difference between big data centers and data network big data center networks are nothing but data center networks that are dealing with uh, these lacks of hosts so the network size is uh, significantly larger issues are significantly larger so that is what it is so typically some of these data centers which are quite small which have only hundreds of hosts thousands of hosts that is a done deal you know how to manage them they have in fact these uh, shipping container based data centers the whole data center comes in a container you just put it in put 
it just has some uh, holes outside you just plug in your ethernet cables and all it will uh, do its task it's there isn't much that happens uh, uh, there isn't i mean they are being sold as a commodity like a container they just sell it to you you just buy it you plug it in you configure it and it is run it is ready to go there isn't much that is happening there it's the big data centers where you know, there's a huge network within the data center how do you tackle the challenges within that is where a lot of research is happening good morning ma'am uh, i have a question related to home assignment post home assignment ma'am first question is that the one activity is subject based we have to uh, uh, frame a question a uh, 12 question it is subject based ma'am yeah everything i mean i have to emphasize this again everything is in the context of computer networks i don't want you to do some uh, cs101 programming or database uh, think pair share this is a computer networks workshop and all the assignments are related to computer networks you cannot have something other than computer networks as part of the submission ma'am one more question is that uh, one activity is that we have to design a video animation so is there any fairware animation software available so typically the animations are done via uh, some i think some java script or some such thing i will have to dig into it a little bit so you may have to write some code for the c code or whatever for that I, it need not be quite an animation also for example you are providing the c code with some parameters and out pops some graphs that show what is happening that uh, that is also fine so i will share with you some reference material for this so that uh, you will have a more clear cut idea so we will break for a tea break